Welcome back everyone. So uh, if you've been following my channel, I've been really buying a lot of cool old Tandy stuff lately. I don't know why, it just sort of worked out that way. Well, I bought this um, Tandy 425SX with uh, CTX, mon not the correct monitor for, but it is correct, but not, you know. Anyway, it came with this beautiful DMP250 color dot matrix printer, which is currently fitted with a, um, I bought a, a black ribbon for it. I bought a couple of them actually, because I can still, you can still buy ribbons for these printers, um, but only the black ones. <laughs> the color ribbons are kind of hard to come by. As a matter of fact, the color ribbon for this printer is absolutely unobtainable. I've scoured every ribbon storehouse on planet Earth, and I actually think I found one. I thought I found one. Hell. <laughs> so, the Tandy DMP250 was actually manufactured by Citizen and is identical to the Citizen GSX-140. The, the engine is the same. The ribbons are the same. The engine is the same. It's all same, same. Um, so I contacted a, uh, a ribbon company that, or a company that sells toner and ribbons, and they actually, actually, they actually had, I couldn't believe it, they had a color ribbon in stock. And they said it was for the GSX-145. And I said, you know what? Sounds close enough to me. I actually sent uh, the salesperson a photo of my existing ribbon. And she said that, yeah, that looks to be about the same. And I said, you know what? I'll take one. Hell, I'll take two. Uh, and ship them to my house, please. And they did exactly that. Before we look at the one that was sent to me, let's take a look at the original. All right, so this is the ribbon that came. This is probably the factory original ribbon. And it it kind of works, uh, but it's pretty much dead. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it is. And it actually, it actually has a tear in it somewhere. So um, it actually gets hung up and that could, that could potentially cause some damage. So we need to replace it, but we have a problem. A new one came in, two of them, to be, to be exact, and we have a problem, a very, very big problem. Can you see what the problem is? Okay. Either I take my printer and run it through a bandsaw and stretch it out, Caramello style, or we do some surgery. Wish me luck. Okay. Get on with it. Now, I could return this. These were not cheap. Let me tell you, these are $40 a piece. We're sitting on $80 worth of ribbons. But here's the thing. The only difference between the two cartridges is the length. That's it. For the most part, they're exactly the same. Same ribbon, same width, or ribbon width really is the same. I mean, it, it is very much the same. The mounting points are the same. Um, the ribbon cartridge depth, I think, is a little bit different. Um, no, same depth, even. They're really the same freaking cartridge, except this one's a wee bit bigger. What are we going to do about this? Um, I have an idea. I might have to do some splicing. Um, that's going to be tricky as hell, but this is science. All right, I had to grab a knife so we can, uh, going to crack this cartridge open here. So what I propose, I think is pretty obvious, and that is that we try to reuse the cassette, but we replace the tape. I think is with all, well within the level of the, the realm of possible. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna open it up.
flat head. Now the one aspect of this that has me tied up in knots is whether or not we'll be able to um, splice the ribbon. So chances are we're not going to be able to pack all that ribbon into this cassette. We're going to have to shorten it somehow. And that's what has me worried. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to do that. Um, that, that looks kind of risky. Because what could happen potentially is as we shorten it up, um, it could potentially, um, that splice could break or get caught into the printer's mechanism, which would be all kinds of bad. So I don't, I don't want that to happen. Another scenario could possibly lead to the ribbon uh, coming undone. Now, that would be comical in a Monty Python-esque uh, fashion, but it would be bad for us because, well, it just would be. So it looks like this ribbon is uh, pinned together, not glued together. I, th I thought it was heat sealed together, but it's not. So I should be able to pull it apart. Cleanly. While I have it apart, I want to share with you a trick. If you've got some ribbons for uh, printers that are just no longer uh, able to get ribbons for, and there are some out there for sure, you can pop these open. The black ribbons more, more so than anything. Ah, I found the splice, or that the tear is right there. So that's what it looks like when it's all inside its cassette. The trick is, we need to transplant the ribbon from one cassette into this one without, without causing a lot of grief and her, us uh, 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 pain. So, easier said than done. Um, looks like only one pin broke, that's cool, that's, that's fine. So we gotta get all this out of here. Look at this one right here. This is where this is where it's all crinkled up and it's causing some some problems. So, but yeah, if you have a black cartridge like this, or a, let's pretend this is a black cartridge, um, you can actually rejuvenate them with WD-40. It really works. I've done it before. You just take a little bit of WD-40 and just kind of spray a little bit of it in, into the um, into the ribbon, and what it'll do is it'll soak in and it'll reliquify some of the uh, pigment that's dried in the ribbon. It really does work. So we got to remember the orientation. So the black stripe faces up. All right, I'm going to take the, uh, the pinch roller out of here. The pinch roller in the gear. And there's a little guide that goes in there. Gotta remember how those parts went into the cartridge. I'm going to try to remove Oh there we go, that's not that bad. Just take these little guide bars off and you can remove this. Put that aside. Now the ribbon that's in here is garbage. We're not gonna try to rejuvenate it. We're gonna just take it out. But I'm gonna practice a little bit because I need to do this again, but I've unraveled one of these before and it's like not worth. So we're gonna do is we're gonna squeeze it together like this with our fingers. And we're gonna pull it out of the cassette like that in one piece. And just throw it in the garbage. Okay. So we have a good cassette here. And we have a brand new ribbon in here. Now I wanna show you this. This is a brand new ribbon. And this is part of the problem with these dot matrix uh, color ribbons is that they they get cross contamination just through, just from packaging sometimes, and um, it's just it's very easy for these to get contaminated, especially the lighter colors like yellow and even red. All right, so I'm gonna pop the uh, this ribbon apart. I'm going to try to pop it apart. 
Now this is a forty dollar ribbon. We cannot get our money back at this point. It is it is now used. Once it's open, it's used. And we don't really care about saving this particular cassette because we're never going to use it. Unless, unless I come across a nice GSX-145. See, it turns out the 140 and the 145 are the same engine, but the 145 is a, a wide carriage. And uh, that is what happened. That is why we are having this, this little little uh, problem. I'm going to try to crack it open. We want to make sure that we don't do any real damage because we don't want to disturb the ribbon inside. Okay. There is no way we're going to fit all that ribbon in there, so we're, we're going to have to shorten. We're going to have to shorten it. Um, that's just... Now, as far as I know, these ribbons are no longer in production. Um, so what we have is what we have. Um, this one right here is probably just old stock. Now these rollers look nice. I'm going to probably use those because the ones that were on the other ribbon were kind of rusty. And this little slidey carriage thing is uh, its the same part. So we could actually reuse that if we had to. All right. Could you imagine being that kid on the block who has the wide, the only wide carriage color dot matrix printer in the neighborhood? I mean, everyone's coming to you to make their lost dog posters, and you're like the, the cool kid in town. Then little Billy, son of a bitch, buys a, or gets a, a wide carriage inkjet for Christmas. <laughs> I joke, no consumer back then had a wide carriage printer. It just didn't make any lot. It didn't make a lot of sense to, to have something like that, unless you really, really needed it. All right. But yeah, these GSX 140, 145 printers—they were good machines, um, but they were still they were still dot matrix, and uh, you know, encumbered by all the limitations and lack of resolution as any dot matrix printer of its time. This is totally the wrong screwdriver, by the way. I should be using something a little beefier. Gosh. Now, in a pinch, we could put a GSX 140 cartridge ribbon into a 145 cassette. That could be done. Um, it would work fine. So if, you're, if your situation is you have a pile of color ribbons for the 140 and you need a ribbon for your 145 and you're in luck. I'm looking inside here and I'm wondering if maybe my problem or my my uh no okay yeah it is it's not completely full of ribbon it's how far can this be compressed? Ooh we might be okay we might not have to do anything Drastic. Let's, uh, this might be all right. This might be all right. Without any mods. No, I'm serious. This one's got a spring-loaded, um, tensioner on it. The other one did not. I guess I didn't see a spring in there. No. All right. Let's do this. We're going to get the ribbon compressed down. Try not to uh, unravel it, because once you unravel the beast, you can't put it back in its container. Once unraveled, it's over, bud. It's over. Okay, here we go. We have one chance, one shot. It's like every 1980s kids movie. You got one chance, you got one shot. Don't fuck it up. All right, you probably didn't say that, but the truth is, I actually have two shots at this because I got two of these ribbons. Oh shit! You fucked it up. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Ah oh, shit! All right, well that's okay. Uh, yeah. Hey, uh, 
I think I can do it. I think I can do it. I think I can do it. Not yet. Don't let the cat in. He's not here. Alright. Well, now that we've done the thing we said we weren't going to do. Ah, oh, crap. But it'll fit. Um, that I'm sure of. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just pack it in a little at a time. Put on some smooth jazz and uh, hope hope I can hope I can do this. You got one chance, don't fuck it up, don't fuck it up. Yeah, this is gonna be time consuming. I'm not gonna film this. <laughs> Here's a little pro tip that I just figured out. Um because I'm such a pro at this, apparently. When you're trying to repack a ribbon back into its cassette, let me put this in focus here. It might help you to get a couple of small binder clips to clip the ribbon so it doesn't unravel any further. And then you can use the ribbon winder to kind of feed it back into itself. So it's gonna start pulling the ribbon off the floor as I turn this winder and pack it right in to the cartridge or to the cassette like so it's a little mangled in here but um, it'll be okay Just try not to tear that ribbon because wouldn't want to go this far and only to have it you know, completely go to hell on me and stuff, you know what I mean? There we, there we go. Don't mind the kitty. He'll be fine. He just can't come in here because kitties and ribbons do not mix. You see, as I roll this with my fingers, it's pulling it up off the floor. I just got to make sure that I leave enough room in, in this cassette for all the ribbon you... Sorry, pal, you can't come... Oh, this is just a mangled mess already. No one ever said this would be easy. When I took ribbon winding in class, you know, when I was in... Uh, I'm just kidding, there was no such thing. But, let me tell you what... Oh, gosh... You know, it's okay. It, it can, it can, it, all right, it can be folded up a little bit. I mean, it will all come out in the wash as the ribbon makes its first complete cycle. It will all kind of. What I'm going to do is probably attach this cassette to my to a drill or something once it's assembled, and I'm going to um, get it to run a full cycle. But this is working pretty well. I can't think of a faster way to do this. If I could, I'd be a millionaire. But it's laying it down into the cassette, and now I can move these clips back a little bit to give it some more elbow room. Yeah, just don't worry about it. it it'll, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Just, that just went to hell. In a hand bucket. Let's, let's, let, right, here's what I'm going to do. Okay, we're going to salvage this. We're going to pull this out. We're going to just kind of run it out here. Okay. Uh, it's all right. It's all right. Okay. Pull it out to that point. Then I'm going to rewind it back in by hand. And it will... It will correct. Correcting ribbon, get it? Ha, ha, ha. I'm gonna have to um, gingerly re-thread the ribbon back in. And uh, very carefully get it back in there. It's all right. My fingers are turning black, by the way. All right. Okay. Get it, get it fed into its little ribbon winding doohickey. There we go. 
and wind it back in. And just do that. See, it's all good. Uh, another little tip, as you're packing the ribbon in through the feeder, take a screwdriver or something thin and just stick it into the ribbon matrix and kind of pack it back into itself to avoid a jam. But we're almost done. Just a few more feet and we're in. We are almost there. You don't want to use your finger because what will happen is your finger is too thick and it's going to disrupt the ribbon in a way that you don't want. So I have one more ribbon, one more of these 24 inch, or, I'm sorry, um, 18 inch ribbons. I think it's an 18 inch. And no, 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 no. I think it's a 15. I forget what the wide carriage was. but. We're gonna get, we're gonna go back and just start packing it in little by little. Now there is more ribbon in this cartridge than it was designed for, so the, we, we may just end up with a longer ribbon life at the end, and um, that is cool. I like that. Now let's see if yeah okay. Let's as long as it can feed itself without getting jammed, which doesn't seem to be happening here. Let's put the cover on. So that's 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 one of the uh, the final tests here is it has to be able to feed itself without slipping. And if it can't do that, well then we've just wasted all of our time and money and energy and stuff. So um, let me get this uh, feeder mechanism lined up. But we've repacked it with brand new ribbon. Now, I might actually order a couple more of these ribbons just in case I need them. But, hey, look at that. It feeds. It feeds, Bill. No, that, that's, that's about as, uh, as successful as you're going to get. Um, one slight problem. That's not really a problem, but it looks like it's riding a little low. On the, um, on the on the on the spindle, so I'm gonna do this. Um, I should just what I should do is unlash it from the, uh, from, the from the feeder and see if I can raise the ribbon up just a wee bit. I think that's just, I think that's where it wants to ride. So we're gonna leave it right where it's at. Now, this opens up a lot of possibilities for those of you who have printers that are unable to find ribbons for. And even with even without um, the proper cross-referencing, um, because some some makes are just so obscure that finding a, an official ribbon for it just may not be possible. And, um, and that is a reality, unfortunately, with a lot of these... I mean, if you're going to play with old tech, you got to be creative sometimes. And, oh yeah, there we go, that's better. So what I'm saying is if you have, let's say, um, I'm going to make up a printer here. Let's say you've got a, a McDonald's 2000 printer. And it happens to use a, um, a one-off printer engine that's, that was made by Hitachi Suzuki or something. On uh, in, in May of 1987, and they only made them for a month. And it uses a weird ribbon. As long as it uses a standard fabric ribbon, um, you can find a printer that uses. You try to maybe pick up a couple of, of old cartridges, I guess, and see which one has a ribbon that's the width you need or close to it. And you can make yourself your own ribbon by unpacking. You know. Um, Basically doing what I just did. I made lemons out of apples. And uh, let's get this, get this this printer guide, ribbon guide back in place. I'm going to use the shiny new steel bars from the, uh, the replacement ribbon. 
and, uh, and they'll fit because they're the same width. One of the most common printer ribbons you can still find is the Apple Image Writer printer ribbons, which are very ubiquitous, um, very common, and uh, there we go. All right, let's test it out. Like I said, I'm going to pick up a few more of those GSX 145 ribbons um, because. Again, I have the cassettes, I just don't have, you know, the, the ribbon. So when, when I finally wear out my collar ribbon printing greeting cards and banners and shit, um, I don't want to be, you know, SOL, so to speak. Let's put this guy back in. Now, I was looking at the other one that came in the box, and it looked like the ribbon was installed upside down. No, it's not. It's fine. Put that in my ribbon box. All right. Yeah. I, when I when I when I unpacked the ribbon, my heart kind of sank. I'm like, no way, no way. So close. And then I just got to thinking. I'm like, I'm not gonna give up. I am gonna just do what I have to do to make this work. Because that that is what you got to do sometimes. All right. Let's turn the printer on. paper in it. Is there paper in this? No. So I'll put some paper in it. And we'll, uh, we'll do some test prints. So you might be wondering, will this work? Can we can we repack one of those ribbons into an image writer printer ribbon? And for that, I want to quickly take a look and see. As long as the ribbon is the same width, yes we can. Um, the geometry of the Image Writer color cartridge is very different. It may not pack as much. In fact, I can tell you it probably won't pack it in, but if the ribbon is the same width, and it is, wait, let's flip that around. Okay, let's see. It is the same ribbon. It will work. So if you can find a four color ribbon for a different printer, because you can't get them for the image writers anymore. There are some around, not as many as there were a couple years ago. Um, I can no longer find them anywhere. So the one I've got is the one I've got. So I just might go ahead and buy a few more of those ribbons. And hey, you know what we're doing? We're helping out a company who is stuck with a ton of ribbons that cannot be sold because nobody uses them anymore. Um, one of, some enterprising entrepreneur needs to build a list of, hold on a second, of every four color dot matrix printer and see which ones we can still get ribbons for and use those as donated, or donated, donators. Use those machines as uh, ribbon donors. Thank you. For the printers that we can't get ribbons for. I'm not gonna be that guy because I got stuff to do. So, let's get some paper in there. I'm gonna print the uh, Arch logo or the, um, the Arch background. Let's see what happens. Oh, it's gonna jam. I forgot to feed extra paper through it. Maybe not, I'm sorry. Maybe not. As only a, uh, a dot matrix color can print, but look at that. That's not terrible. Could be worse. Now, a lot of that could have to be, you know, again, you get a lot of banding, um, and that's going to happen with these. I mean, that's just how it is. But that's is, that's okay. That's okay. Um, at least it's in color. 
so. And uh, we'll take it offline. I'm gonna reset it to top of forum, and that's that. I say that was a success. Now you can uh, test the alignment by printing um, some black text. So if I open up like Notepad, for example, and I open, um, no, that's too big. Let's open up Auto Exec Bat, and we'll print that. See how that comes out. If it comes out in color, then we know we have an alignment problem. That looks pretty good. That's razor sharp, my friends. That's pretty good. That's pretty damn good. Look at that. Nice. All right. Thanks for your help, Oreo. Oh, watch this. You want to? You want to see a really happy kitty? Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! What do I do with it? What do I do with it? Oh, look at that! I was afraid of it. What's this? I should sniff it. Oh, come on! Do something cat-like. Play with it. Play with the ribbon. I mean. What, 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 what is stopping you? Look at how long this ribbon is. Try to find the. There's a tear in this ribbon. Let's try to find that. Right where the splice is. Yep, the splice. It's a heat splice. They melted it. That's how they do it. Yeah, that's where it broke. Anyway, he doesn't seem to care. All right then. Hi. Hi. Tired. I'm so tired when I'm bored. Oh. On this lovely snow day with no snow on the ground. It's an ice day. Ice, ice, baby. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> You're so weird. YouTubers <laughs> don't know the behind the scenes of this goofball. For the better. But I wouldn't the, want to for, spend... For the better. For the better. I wouldn't want to spend Valentine's Day with anybody else. Well, good. Me either. Good answer. <laughs> yeah. By the way, Valentine's Day is over. And we're going to take the... Uh... What? I made those. I know you did. We can enjoy them next year. I will take them down. Okay. When you unload the dishwasher and put all the dishes away. Okay. Fair enough. 